morning. Welcome to the crack of dawn. I'm Dawn Lombardi, your hostess for the night. And gosh, do we have a great show for you tonight. You won't believe it. So I was visiting my friend Georgia in Rye, New York, which is kind of past Greenwich. And, uh, you know, she's a musician. She's an oboist. And she also ran the Siena Music Festival for a while. And she was like, my friends Larry and Christina are coming over. I'm like, oh, what do they do? She goes, well, Christina's is a banker, very successful. Larry's a drummer, very successful. I go, what? How? What do they do? She goes, he's a drummer on Broadway. And I was like, what? What do you mean? That's crazy. So we came in, hit it off. Larry's here tonight. Please welcome Larry Lully from Broadway. He's a drummer. This is fantastic. I can't even believe you just drove here. Larry just drove here from New York City. And uh, you join us right over here. Okay. Good to see you. Oh my gosh, we're all mic'd up. So we've got our camera on. I can't too. believe it. I'm so excited. Good to be here. Thank you for having I'm me. I'm excited. So I'll tell them what we're painting okay. uh, tonight. There's a little bit of his, his idea. So. I don't know a lot about Broadway, but this is probably one of the biggest famous ones, the producers. Yeah. And you're probably thinking, Dawn, you don't even know that. And I, I really don't. I don't think I've ever seen it. Matthew Broderick and Nathan Lane. So we're going to paint a diptych. So my side's going to be uh, Matthew Broderick. His is going to be Nathan Lane. And we'll, we'll show you what we're doing while we're going along. But we're going to do two minute, 30-minute uh, episodes. It goes by like a flash. And we're going to sit down and paint and talk. So I'm going to ask him all sorts of questions that you'll probably want to know, and um, and that I want to know. And uh, let's get started. I can't wait. Yeah. We're doing uh, black and white. Anything in between is gray. And uh, we'll see how it comes out when we're done. So great. So we'll start here. We both have our waters. I just took plates, you know, like I do usually out of my cabinet, right from Walmart. You know, they're like $1.50. Mm -hmm. I'll just replace them. And everybody's like, oh, that's wasting. But you know what? I Sometimes I clean them. So I'm not that wasteful. <laughs> So here's what we're gonna do. Yeah, so just start when you want. I've got okay. brushes. I always put a bunch of different size brushes. You can use whatever you want, and you can also use any of the ones I have. And if you mess it up, it's all right, because we can fix it after the end. So, oh my gosh, so let's start with this. So it took you a couple hours to get here. Yeah. And where was, where, where was your starting point, like right in Manhattan? Well, I was up at, no, I was up at my house. Where's I that? I a house up, up by New Paltz. Where's that? Uh, you know where Poughkeepsie is? Oh yeah, Poughkeepsie. I know right where that is. Right okay. across the river from Poughkeepsie. Really? Yeah. You're yeah, kidding. Yeah. So I came basically straight east yeah. from my house over here. And what's traffic like generally? Was it worse on like looking back? There fine. was no traffic no at traffic. all. No traffic. Okay, yeah. that's good to know. Yeah. Do people, um, do you ever take the train around there? I do sometimes when I go into the city and I don't want to bring my car in. Yeah? Yeah. But absolutely. you have a car. I do. Okay, yeah. and it's easy to do that. Yeah. Okay, so like, okay, before Broadway, where did you grow up? Oh, I've lived all over the place. You have? I was born in Chicago. Really? Then I moved all over Wisconsin. You did? Yeah. And um, ended up going to college in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, which was a great... Okay, so you went to high school in great, Wisconsin, yeah, too? Yeah, yep. But okay. I went to college Loved at it. Eau Claire. It. it was awesome. Loved it? Okay. Loved it. Loved it. Okay, so that was a good place. Now, it's yeah. still open, right? My college, a couple of mine are yeah. closed. Okay, that's It's good. a great jazz department there. They were really kind of taking off, and, and nowadays they win the big band awards for Downbeat Magazine. Like, it's really one of the best places jazz. to go for jazz. Jazz. Yeah. And isn't University of Miami good for jazz, too? It is. Okay, because yeah. I know some people that, that teach there. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, oh, that's so great. Okay, yeah. so you went there. Yep, and then I moved. Knew right to... away you were going to do drumming, or just? Oh, no. since I was, like, two years old. They're really? They're my earliest memories. That was yeah. it? Yeah. I was was just... anybody a musician in the family, like your dad, or did you have, like, instruments No, but they around? loved music. My parents loved music. They did? And they had lots of great records and stuff, but... I, apparently, my great grandfather yeah. on my mom's side was like a kind of a gypsy musician. Really? He's the only real musician who, that we know of in the family. My grandmother played a little piano. My aunt played a little so piano. So, like a gypsy musician means he played a little he bit traveled, of everything. He played all the instruments and traveled all over the place. And he was like rarely ever home. Really? That's, that's what, a thing. That's what he did. I can't even believe it. But I never met him. I never knew him. No, no. Okay. Or if I did, so... I was too young to right, remember. Right, right. But so, yeah, it's just and they what loved I, music. So what did they have? Their genre was probably, well, my parents were Elvis. I mean, all the way, but I don't know what yours listened to. Oh, Ever, jazz, whatever. actually. Oh, jazz, They okay. liked jazz, and my mom liked, you know, folk music and, um, you know, kind of the 60s. Okay, like you Joan know, Bayer. Mamas and the Papas. Oh, yeah, Mamas and, you know, and the singer Papas. Singer-songwriters of the yeah. time. Okay. She really loved them. And your parents, how many kids in the family? Uh, just me and my sister. That's it? Yeah. Is she musical? She's not at all. She's not. No. <laughs> I was really very much, That's they so wondered funny. where I came from. 
So when you went Presidents. to college, you said, do they have uh, music here? And they did. Well, I went there specifically for it. I mean, you really did. Yeah, Jeez. I was when I was in high school. I mean, I realized, oh, people can make a living out of this. And, yeah, yeah. And so I wanted to do that. And so that's what I did. It. And what was funny is my college teacher, who recruited me pretty heavily, um, he when I got there, I said, okay, great, because I'd never taken any drum lessons up until that point. Really? I was self-taught, completely self-taught. I can't self -taught. even believe it. What and was your first drum set? Young? Ten? Twelve. Twelve. When they finally, my mom broke down and got me one when she I was did? I begged for years and years and years. They wouldn't let me play in school. There were too many drummers in school. And oh, so yeah, they were like, loud. here's a trombone if you want to play. And I was like, this oh, is Oh, yeah, you know, you're right. No, you're right. They did do that. They, so they finally let they me. They got you the drum set. Yeah. And 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 then I, I just sat down and instantly knew how to play it. You really did? Yeah, I don't All know. All of the stuff? Nobody knew. Nobody knows why I did. But And so then I was completely self-taught until I got to college. And yeah. I was so excited to finally have lessons. And I said, okay, great. I'm going to learn how to really play and all this stuff. And he said, nope. You can play drum set already. Here's the timpani mallets. You're gonna that play timpani. That was it. That was it. He said, "No, okay. Now you learn timpani. Here's some marimba mallets. You're gonna play marimba." I had to learn everything else other than drum set, and I was so mad. How many drums are on the regular set? There's like ten, like you know, well, the ones that you do like this. The average, with? the typical five-piece kit. Five, five, including the cymbal thing. No, five pieces means five drums. drums. Okay. Like a snare drum, three tom toms, and a bass drum. The bass That's, one's the one you do yeah, with the foot? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. can't believe it. Yeah. You just learned easy? Yeah. So you've got to be some sort of ambidextrous something. Yeah. Yes. You have to have four-way independence. So yes. all your limbs have to be able to function I can't even independently believe that. from each other. Yeah. Isn't there a drummer that lost his arm but still played? Who was yeah. that? Rick Allen, the from drummer what? for Def Leppard. Yeah. Def Leppard, right? Yeah, he was in a car accident. Yes, but he still played. Was it did it? He's still playing. Is yep, he, he still can he do it? it? Yep. Jesus. He refigured I how to do everything that. and <clears throat> set up all these electronics around his drum kit so they can play. I know I read something about that. It's just interesting yep. because it's like Jerry Garcia only has like a couple fingers missing mm -hmm, or right, something like right, that, right? right? It's so funny. <laughs> but I mean, to be able to pick up the drums and do that, it's crazy. Yeah. So how, so you Well, anyway, graduated. the rest of that story is. Yes, I need more. I was. Got two episodes. <laughs> I was so grateful to that drum teacher. And his name is Ron Kieser. Still He's here. Unfortunately, no, no longer oh, with us. Oh, darn. Um, his son is a tremendously talented, um, Grammy-winning pianist. He is? Wonderful, wonderful pianist. Um, but but I, the point is, I'm so grateful that he made me learn all those other instruments because it's how I was able to get on Broadway. If I didn't know any of those other instruments, I probably never would have gotten a shot on Broadway because my first show that I ever subbed on Broadway was Miss Saigon. Miss Saigon was, was on, the first one, yeah, really? Yep, yeah, and it was all marimba and timpani and gongs and everything except all the stuff set. he taught you. Yep. Except so for the I drink stuff him, you already knew. I have him to thank for really? getting me started in my career. Now, yeah. do you think you were just also like for a teacher, maybe you were easy to teach too because you knew you were going to get it? And not be like, how do you do it again? You know, maybe you were just. Good I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know if I was easy to teach or not. I was Probably. very strong headed. So <laughs> I was very opinionated. Really? Go, oh, absolutely. <laughs> And I always challenged all of my teachers. And what did <laughs> so he I don't do know like outside? Say, did, he, did he play in a band? Outside? Oh, yeah, he, oh, he was did. Okay. wonderfully okay. successful freelance he was? drummer. Yep. He, he was? played all over the area. Yeah. Oh, my God. I was very lucky to go to school there. And my and the first year that I was there was the first year of our of our jazz department really um, functioning, and we they had just hired this guy named Robert Baca, who was the first you know the lead trumpet player with the Buddy Rich big band. Oh really? And so he came there and he like a Benny Goodman kind of thing. Yeah, oh, big really? band. Oh really? God. Yep. Big band. And, uh, and not large band like Lyle. right, <laughs> right, right. Not like Lyle and large band, but big band and. Oh so God, he was all so about cool. the drums, the connection between the lead trumpet and the drums. So he was kicking my butt. My percussion teacher was kicking my butt. So I got a really, really good. So you had a really solid education I was very, drums. very lucky. I was very lucky. So then out of college, you did four years? Yeah, four got years. Got it done. And what do you get the then degree I, in? Like, like me, art, Music right? performance. Okay, music performance? That's yeah. what you got it in? Yeah. Same. I think Georgia got that, right? Yeah. Yep. yeah music and I had a minor in conducting as well. You did? I thought maybe I was going to. Yeah, my, my original. Drip, but, yeah. Yeah, I don't care. Oh, you're doing so great. Uh, just remember, follow the lines with the black yeah. sometimes because you know what? Then the rest you can fill in. Yeah, that's great. And, you know, okay. we're just doing the basic okay, thing, you know, I the basic projector thing that everybody knows I do when I'm, uh, you know, teaching people how to draw and stuff. So, God. So, okay. So, graduated from that. And then. Oh, yeah. I, I moved to Minneapolis after that. 
Um, is that far from where you lived? It was, it's Here, about if you want to um, quit, you can take mine. And this one's skinny too. Oh, okay. And sometimes, Thank you. yeah, and sometimes they wreck, but we don't care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you moved to Minneapolis. Yeah, Minneapolis. That's Minnesota, and, right? Yeah, because I, I didn't Amazing. quite know what I was doing with my life. And, and it was close, and there was an amusement park there called Valley Fair Amusement Park. And I played in the live you shows. You play in the shows there. So Plus, it was you know, great Millie training. Plus, you know, Millie Vanilli, they got caught <laughs> at uh, Lake Compounds right up the road. <laughs> right. Yeah, they got caught right here. Oh, up poor Millie Vanilli. Poor Millie Vanilli. Oh, yeah. You know, and a lot of people lip sync now, so it's not really fair. Right. Ashley Simpson got caught on right. Saturday Night Live, too. Well, apparently season. they didn't know that they had been replaced on the recording. That's the story I that I was told. They yes. didn't know it. Yes, because Nicole, so. George's sister, was working there at the time yeah. with Ashley. Yeah. But, oh, my gosh. So you're in Minneapolis just doing shows. So it's sort of like when musicians go on a cruise ship and they make a ton of money. Yeah. They're not married. They just well, I did that after that. Party, so party, I did the, or no? I did the, oh, sure. It was great. So I did really? amusement park, and then I started playing around Minneapolis and started getting gigs and whatever, and um, and then I went and did a cruise ship. You really did? Uh -huh. You did? Yep. And I liked it so much because it, it's a free blast. travel. Your whole day is free, and you, you just play at tons night. Tons of people on the boat, yeah. right? Like there's a oh, staff and people from all over the, the world. It was so fascinating. But someone could say, "Hey, come to visit my parents in Spain," or like, you know, I'm from Chicago. Entirely. Or whatever, so am I. Yeah. Oh, that's so fun. I love so that. So it was great. And I did ended up doing quite a few of those contracts, and I became the music director on the biggest ship at the time, which was the SS Norway. It was the old SS France that used to do transatlantic cruises. So it was a lot of history on that ship. So and like I was the music director. Late 80s, mid 80s. This is mid early 90s. Early 90s. Early 90s. Oh, that's like the perfect time yeah. to go. Oh, oh it was my blast. God, it I had was so blast. much fun. And where did the cruise ship go? Like everywhere? All over. We were mostly in the Caribbean. I'm just doing this, so I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, okay. It's like stained glass, so I'm just kind of, you know, making oh, I it see. up. Giving some but again, there. it's like a paint by number, so it should look pretty good when we're yeah. done. So where to go? Caribbean? Uh, mo yeah, mostly Caribbean, um, South America, yeah. that kind of stuff. We were out of Miami or out of Aruba. So it was great. And all you all needed those... was your passport before you boarded yeah. and like, took the yeah. job. Yeah. Really? It was so much fun. That I is had so, much so fun. fun. Yeah. And, and I, oh said, so I saved up a ton of money. A ton of money, right? Because you don't have to yeah. they feed you, right? You're yeah. sleeping there. Yep. What about drinks? Do they give you free drinks now? Uh, no. No. Because then they would lose. Then they'd go the <laughs> right. That's hilarious. Oh, my God. What a ball. So that was I fun. had so much fun. So and how many so years you, did you do that? I know a couple. On and off yep. for about three years. Three years? Yeah. On and off. Because yep. you do a contract. You, you say, like, I'm going to commit to three months or six months. Yeah. And then you get off and you take a break, you know. Yeah, well, you can't do that three yeah. times in the row. Yeah. You'd go crazy. Oh it's a God. lot easier these days. Um, back then, this was before the internet, so you didn't, it was hard to keep in touch with people. Yeah, that's true. I didn't That lived in the that. States. So you would send a, a snail mail, a letter, so send it off. We didn't always No, you couldn't, no. you couldn't have phone. I mean, you couldn't get a ship landline. to shore. God, call was like crazy. ten dollars a minute or something like oh, that. Oh yeah, yeah. And so you couldn't afford it. I remember it. that if you called over in Europe yeah. or something, yeah. it wasn't free. Or like you'd go to now. a calling yeah. station if you were on an island somewhere yeah. and you had to wait for one of those booths, and that was like still that was like four dollars a minute or yeah, something. Yeah, no, you're so right. You're right. So you couldn't cost be in touch with anybody. So by the time you came back, you needed a break. Yeah. And yeah. then you had a ton of money anyway, so that was good. I was very fortunate. So and so then from the cruise, where'd you go? Then um, I moved to Nashville. You did? Oh, God. Because, well, the woman that I was dating at the time uh, really wanted to be a country singer. She did? Yeah, and she's a great Good. singer. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I was like, okay, you know, we took trips. It doesn't trips. matter where you go, We right? took trips. Yeah, I was fine. Because I can play drum drums wherever. Yeah. You know. So we took trips to L.A. and to New York and to Nashville. And we decided that we would go to Nashville and give it a try. So we just moved there cold. You really did? Yeah. Oh, God. I was very, very lucky. Uh, I don't right, know. Well, I'm doing the same thing. I I'm don't like know. shaking like a leaf. It's all right. We don't care. <laughs> it's like we're just having a ball. So I went to Nashville. Yeah, na go to Nashville. I was very, did very lucky. Did you like lucky. it there? Uh, not overall. It's a very nice town. Now, that's the name of that crazy street there, too. Broadway, right? Yes. Yes, okay. Yeah. I thought so. Um, <gasps> it's a, it's a it's really crazy. lovely place to live. It is? The people are lovely, but I was very fortunate to get a gig really quickly after moving there. And you did? There, yeah, there are different cliques. It's very cliquish. It is? Yeah, and I ended up getting on a road gig, and so I was in the road clique, which is great, and I had a blast, but it's hard to get off the road. 
So it you're is. living on a bus. You're doing one-nighters all over the country. I mean, it's it's fabulous. It's glamorous. I can't even see that. <laughs> like, I got my glasses on. She's like, it's Thank 10 you. Good job. She got the cue card from Nettie. Oh, my God. So it's but not so I was on the, right. Even if you were in a five-star hotel, it's probably not great. You barely, you're barely Doesn't there. Matter. You're not even because there. Because you get on the bus and you drive eight hours to the next town where you do the next concert. So it's not a whole no, lot of living. Yeah. It's a lot of sitting around and waiting yeah. and... And That's sleeping whenever you can experience. grab. Yeah, I can't even believe it. And you went all over the place, right? All over the country. Yep. Really? Did you yeah. have a road manager? Probably. The oh yeah. That drove the oh, it was a big it. production. I mean, we had a you know huge. The <laughs> well, this. the first group that I played with, which were wonderful, is a band named Pinkerton Bowden. Really? And they're, I call them the Weird Al Yankovic of country music. Oh, I music. love Weird they, Al Yankovic. That's what they do. They, really? Yeah. They do? They, but they, they do make, it with country music? Yeah, exactly. And they're oh my hilarious. God. And they, at the time, they were oh, huge stars. God, that's gotta be So hilarious. we would actually play multiple nights at a venue. They would sell it out and play several shows. <laughs> they were so hilarious. Like their stuff was on TV. That they is would, hilarious. I think you I can love still that. buy their albums on really? TV. Oh, that's like late so night infomercials kind I of love stuff, that. you know? Oh my God. We had so much fun. So you but, went on the road there. Yeah. Then I went with a guy and what named. What about the girl? Whatever. She did. Did she end up fancy, like. Country music she or who knows? didn't. No, she. No. Well, she ended up moving back to the Midwest where we were from because she wanted to be closer to her family at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, and she still That's sings, fine. I think, from time to yeah. time. Yeah. But I was. I just wasn't happy being on the road all the time. Well, you know what? People say and, that it's hard. Yeah. That's why, like a lot of people. That's kind of why they can't keep a relationship. So relationship. fast. Don't oh, forget. that's looking great. Yeah, remember, I, I'm just filling in. So we just have, we kind of have what, like when you go to like a, a, you know, when you go to a store and they have those paint by numbers for like the little old ladies, except they'll have the numbers. Like the nine means you got to put yeah, this. Yeah, we're yeah. just winging it. So we're using black, white, and anything in between. So it is hard because if you're like, oh, what do I make a skin color? Well, nobody's really, you know, as white as a piece of paper. And I've, yeah, I've seen some pretty black guys, but usually, <laughs> yeah, not not everybody. There's hardly anybody's as white as a paper because I teach this at school. The kids are yeah. like, "How do I make skin color?" And well, well, black and white mixed together is gray, and if you see a gray person, like it's not a good thing. So basically, stick with your brown, <laughs> and you can add some black to the brown to get it super dark. And like nobody really wants to be an albino, and I feel bad for people that are. So God bless you <laughs> if you are. But yeah, I mean seriously, that's a scary thing. You can't even go in the sun. My yeah. kid can barely go, but imagine if yeah. you're like super yeah, white. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so yeah. So skin color, you just gotta get. If it's a darker person, you're gonna go with a darker gray, and if it's a lighter person, you're gonna go with lighter. So it's fun. So I can. So we're getting near the Broadway thing. I would imagine she oh, brought yeah. up the ten minute cue cards. I think she's gonna give us a two minute or a five minute. And I would yeah. imagine it goes by so fast, but I think we still have a ton of time. Okay, good. Yeah, and I keep babbling right into the credits because it's better than stopping and being like, "Are we done?" You know, it just goes <laughs> in and like they just cut me off. Fade you out. That's yeah. it. Fade out. Yeah. Right. So so after the cruise ship, then what? Oh yeah. Oh so yeah. Wait, Nashville. Wait, I would not have Nashville. So wait Nashville. a minute. You had to pay for an apartment, and did you were on the road all the time. Yeah. Oh, so she had it made. Well, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Really? yeah, but it's, you know, <laughs> it's hard to have a life when you're well, on the road true. like Where's that all the time. And again, it was before the yeah. internet or the cell phones. And yeah. so you, it was funny to see the bus would pull in, you know, some like what a Waffle House or something in the middle of the night somewhere <laughs> in Georgia. True. And everybody would go and line up at the payphone. Oh, to go yeah. call back oh, home, God. say, hey, you know, good night to the kids or, you know, talk to their wife or yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it really God. was, it wasn't, it wasn't what yeah, I wanted yeah, to do. Yeah. I was very lucky to do it and yeah. I had a good time, but I was like, okay, this and is enough for me. lifelong friends for sure that you still have from that? No, no exactly. Okay. Um, yeah. I don't, Who I don't exactly know why that, that is, right, but when know. I left Nashville, I kind of didn't look back. Yeah, right. I was right, like, this right, was a chapter right. in my life. And it's a whole I met different a few, vibe. I have a, a few good friends who I'm still in touch with. And things a whole different vibe to, in New York, right? Very, totally different. Very. But when I, God, I, can't uh, I met a friend on a, on a cruise ship, or made a friend on a cruise ship, and... <laughs> God, we got five minutes. It's a ton of time. Tons of time. And he was doing Broadway yeah. when I met him on the cruise ship. And he said, hey, if you ever you know, come through New York, give me a call, and uh, we'll hang out. And so I did. I just went to New York to go visit. Really? Called him up. Really? Yeah. He said, come on in, do no problem? He, well, no, no. This, we just got together. He was a bass player. 
I can't. But I said, so what? It. So how does the, how does it work here? You know, this city is great. I love the energy and everything. What's what's happened? He said, well, I'm going to introduce you to some Broadway friends of mine. He said, play drums around Broadway, and you can meet and you can come and sit in the pit and see what they think of that it. That is you know? so cool. But you know how to play all those different instruments, and you know how to follow he a conductor. He already knew you were talented. Yeah, right. he wouldn't. Yeah, well, we played it. together on oh the on God. the ship, and he was like, Good oh, it's you. great playing with you. So. Oh my God. So he just started introducing me, and one person led me to the next person, led me to the next person. And just I just kept started going up and up yeah. and up. And I was like, so this is great. great. I'm just going to move here and see what happens. And I did. I moved. You really cold. did. I quit. I quit the band that I was playing with in Nashville. I put my drums in my oh car. Oh my god, you really did. It looks like you I, could make a Broadway <laughs> show out of the damn story. I mean, you really could. Yeah. And it's. Oh and my god. So I moved up. And that was. Spring of 96. Yeah. And I just moved up and I got an apartment and I just started hanging out and meeting people and going and sitting in a jam session. You did? Just like, because I, I had saved up all this money yeah. to do Thank just God. this. Yeah. Because I didn't want to like have to get a job at McDonald's or something. No, I know. Bills. I know. Or just whatever. You moved to the city, yeah. you're overwhelmed. Yeah. You got to do something to pay the bills. So, was the rent terrible back then or is it worse? Well, obviously, it's worse. Well, now. it's worse now, yeah. But, it's still but bad. for me at the time, it was doubling my rent. I went from what I was paying in Nashville oh, to moving really? to a little studio, oh, yeah. a crappy studio oh, apartment yeah. in Manhattan was double what I was paying was? for a whole house in Nashville. Yeah. So that was that was a rude awakening. <laughs> but did you just love like busting out of your apartment and when you open the door, oh, yeah. kind of the light opens and oh, the I love, so that you love I that loved whole it. feeling? I loved it. Oh, God. I, I was so happy. That, I was like, oh, this is where I'm supposed to be. And then did you stay in that apartment the whole time? Like, now do you have subsidized housing? No, no, no. That's unfortunately. That's a long time ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I only had that place for three months. And it was very much a trial. Uh, like, I was like, I'm going to see what happens here. Because I can't afford to just, because I was burning through my savings. Oh, It went so meant? fast. $10,000 in three months. $10,000. But I was like, if I'm gonna no, you gotta try it, it though. I've got to go for it. Believe it. That's scary. Yeah, that's scary. It was. It was very yeah, scary. I, I think it's scary. It was probably one of the only times in my life where I've been quite nervous about. I did, but I just had to do it. I did just, it. I just had a feeling something was there, and I, I needed to try. I can't even believe it. I can't believe it. So that started. So, so the, the so the first apartment was on which like what what area like Alphabet City is uh, Little Korea. Little Korea. Where's yeah. that? Uh, Way East up. Thirty Second Street. Oh, that's nice now. Yeah, it was. It, it is now. Oh yeah. Like Back then it was. So it wasn't nice. so nice. It was. Oh man, the stink was from it? all the garbage at night because it's lined with. Oh yeah, um, it is. Chinatown is part of it or it, no? No, no, uh -uh. it's separate. I get it, bro. I get it all. Right. <laughs> Two minutes. That's a tiny oh, man. time, Eddie. Man, it's like you think of a TikTok video. I think they're three minutes long. So you're <laughs> I know. kidding me. So, Ch so, so Korea. It's all God. Little Korean Korea. Town, it was little, little, little Korea. Korea. Yeah, it's still there. And is I'm not it having still... good luck with this brush. Oh, don't worry. I mean, we, sometimes what I always say is, give me yours, Larry, and he'll switch and take mine. We don't care. <laughs> we, we These are going to go in that. his apartment anyway. Yeah, I don't want them. Uh, I love giving away stuff. Plus, he'll just will remember him about coming on the yeah. show. Yeah. So, oh God, I'll tell you. Well, you know what? It's like. It's like when you go into the city and some people are like, oh, come visit us in Times Square. Unless you're like a multimillionaire, you're living in a closet. Yeah. For like four it's grand rough. a month, right? It's rough. Yep. Like a closet. Yep. Yeah. It's a rough city. But some it's people, expensive. like I would imagine that you probably don't have, well, maybe you do now, but at the time, did you have a ton of clutter or was it just your drums? I didn't have anything. Because I, I moved here with just what was in my car. So it was drums and some clothes and some books, sticks, some CDs. Yeah, some sticks. Are sticks I mean, I was, expensive? Yeah. Oh, they are. Why? Oh, yeah. It's just well, a stick. they're wood. Oh, really? It's expensive, and and we go through a lot. It's of like them. a Harry Potter wand. It's not just a stick. <laughs> right. It's like an expensive stick. But you know, I mean, stick. and heads and symbols. I mean, a lot of what we it's have to play, stuff. it costs a lot of money. It's very expensive to be a musician it is? and to have high quality gear. Yeah. So the hockey player, if you play hockey, the goalie has to have, the, it's got to be rich to be the goalie. What's the most expensive to be? A, probably the drummer. Well, no, so I would say that? like a, probably a violinist or something. Oh, someone that has Because they music. have a, if you ever want to get a Stradivarius, oh, yeah. you know, like a real, like a 300 it's year like old instrument. like what Yo-Yo Ma lifted in the that, cab. 
Yeah, yeah. I remember. <laughs> right. The musicians are kind of like hundreds this, though, right? of thousands of Nothing dollars. Nothing against yo-yo, but I mean, if you well, forget something that's a, you're an artist, you know, right. your brain might be, you know, that's what I'm thinking. Somewhere else. I leave my keys. I lock the car in. I've got AAA for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, we got a lot I going was, on. I know we've got a lot going on, yeah. but I'll never forget that. Yeah. Okay. So the strings instrument are expensive. Yeah, hundreds of thousands of dollars, I and know. for the bows as well, they you really could spend a hundred thousand dollars on a bow. On a bow. Yeah. And you have to have a couple, you know? And drums are expensive. Yeah, drums are very expensive, though, too. So we're going to wind down this episode. We are go We're already maked up. Now, sometimes, Larry, we do the Superman Wonder Woman thing. We run into this telephone booth and change for the next episode. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but we want to get out of here. We want to go That's see right. uh, Sal That's at right. Piccolo. That's so, right. So, yeah. So we're going to go into the next episode. So we're just going to keep babbling. And then, Nate, when you ever cut us off, just cut us off. That's we don't care. So great. But thanks for coming on so the show. Good. My Thanks pleasure. for tuning in, My and pleasure. we'll see you in about two more minutes for another episode. Thanks yes. for tuning into the Crack of Dawn again. My guest Larry Lelly, please. I'm, I'm not going to tell you which is his new Broadway uh, show. We'll talk about it next time, but we still can't say anything. It's secretive. But we'll talk <laughs> about more things, and then you can find him on social media and look for yourself. And then it's coming up, so it's going to be cool. Sometimes life just happens. Don't worry. Farmington Motorsports will get you back on the road and at a fair price. From towing to tires, emissions to transmissions. Our ASC certified techs do it all. Farmington Motorsports is a family-run business. We're in Napa Auto Center and AAA approved. We work on all makes and models from preventative maintenance to major repairs. And every repair is backed by our two-year, 24,000-mile nationwide warranty. When life happens to you, don't worry. Farmington Motorsports. Today, I have a very special guest, Dr. Andrew Lynn. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Veterans Corner. My name is Chuck Wooden. Decision for ourselves for this week if we want to be made well. Hi, welcome to the crack of dawn. It's Dawn Lombardi. I'm starting the painting. It's going to be the clips with some water. Love it. He took me on the sets of Lost in Space, Batman. Everybody has a story. What's yours? Until next time.